Good morning and happy moon day. Happy post eclipse moon day. How's everybody doing out there? I hope that you saw the show last night. The It was just fabulous. And the total time that the moon was eclipsed was 84 minutes, making it the longest prime time eclipse in the century. Yep. Yeah, you know, talk about the Roaring Twenties. We're we're back at them in a brand new way, right? Yeah. So um, let me know if you're here. I had plumbing stuff this morning, so I'm a little late saying hello to you. But that's Pluto stuff. Pluto rules plumbing. So if you're having plumbing difficulties, you know what planet to blame it on, depending on where Pluto is active in your chart. So um, as we move along this morning... First of all, have you felt the lift in energy? I am really feeling it. Now, part of that is because the moon moved into jovial, fiery Sagittarius this morning. And with Jupiter in Aries now since the 10th and the moon in Sagittarius, this is a, a wonderful day. It's a day of joy. As Jupiter rules Sagittarius, you've heard the phrase by Jove. Yeah, well. Joyful is another word for Sagittarius. So as we begin, let's do the heart drop. And if you're here, please let me know in the chat. Say hello. Let me know where you're hailing from. And let me know how this eclipse felt to you. Did you get to see it? Did you feel it? That's the main thing. Because this was super emotional energy. Water. This big eclipse show in a water sign, Scorpio. We're going to talk all about that and how to move forward with this energy now to make the most out of it. So put your feet on the floor, palms up in your lap, in the receptive mode, and begin to allow your breath to come and go. Just take a couple, two or three deep cleansing breaths. Make sure you're breathing fully. Is your belly moving? Hi, Catherine. That's one of the things that um, Gemini retrograde, this Mercury retrograde reminds us of is breath. To live fully, you must breathe fully. So on the next breath, feel that breath coming up from below the soles of your feet, about three and a half feet down into the earth. That earth star energy, your own personal electromagnetic connection to the grid of the earth. So just bring that energy up, that beautiful, delicious, ever-sustaining, loving energy of the earth, grounding you up through your whole body, filling your cells with delicious, supportive earth energy. And as it wafts up, on the exhalation, see light about 18 inches above your crown chakra. And that light now pours down through your crown on the exhalation. So take a couple more breaths like that, feeling your cells quicken and fill with not just air, but literal life force from source, from the all that is. Breathe in. Through the nose, out, through the mouth. And now on the next breath, we inhale, Feeling the breath all the way from our toes to our fingertips and the top of our head. And as we exhale, all the mental thinkity think now drops as we feel our, <clears throat> our mental energy move, our mind energy move from the head, behind the face, cereal mask, down through the throat, into your chest, coming to rest in your heart. Take a few breaths like that. And you might see that light from above your crown chakra becoming pink, rose, the light of self-love. Feel the green light of the earth come up on the inhale, that healing light of the earth. And the pink light as you exhale, filling you with self-love.
And now, on the next exhalation, feel that light in your heart spread through your whole body, becoming very strong in your core, a column of self-loving light, filling the core of your being, moving out into your world, balancing all your chakras, filling your auric field, emanating from your core. Love is what you are, the truth of your being. Breathe in and out of your heart a few times. And open your eyes and come back to be with me. How'd that feel? Yeah, calms me right down, brings me into the present right away. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how many of you were around years ago. Actually, Alec Baldwin <clears throat> remade the movie with the character The Shadow. But there was a phrase that said, only the shadow knows. And that's really what this Scorpio eclipse popped the shadow collectively, big time. Pluto has to do with the field of the unconscious and the collective shadow. So we're going to talk a little bit about nodes today. One of the overarching themes of 2022, one of the big themes of awakening in 2022. The energy shifted from air and fire, Gemini and Sagittarius, to earth and water this year. Washing away all the blockages and misperceptions and hurts and wounds and negative programming of the past. All the things that would sabotage you so that you can ground the dream of the new earth, your vision, your new earth, in firmly on firma terra. I find, I found that the buildup to this eclipse was amazing. And because the, the new moon, the eclipse on the new moon, the solar eclipse in Taurus, remember that on April 30th? It was a partial eclipse, 65% um, occluded when it, was, um, when it was complete, when it was uh, at its maximum. But still, we felt it because it was not only a new beginning, but it turbocharged that new beginning. And it was conjoined with Uranus. So it wasn't just that moment that that happened because Uranus is takes seven years to go through a sign. So it was that, that degree, that seeding of that characteristic of energy, expecting the unexpected, upset apple carts so that we could bring them forth in a brand new way, move forward in a brand new way. That was what that eclipse gave us. And that expecting the unexpected things that can happen much more quickly. And uh, Uranus is called the Great Awakener. It's the god of chaos. And so this is also in operation for the next six months as this, these eclipses unfold. Because this lunar eclipse was so long, this next six months we're going to really, really see it in operation in the world, moving the shadow, bringing it up, revealing it to us, because a lot of creative energy, fertile creative energy, is hidden in the shadow. And, you know, when it says only the shadow knows, and it is the unconscious, it's challenging to get at, but with an eclipse like this, it just pops it. So, <clears throat> Solar eclipses are new beginnings, new information, new light poured into the area of your life where 10 degrees of Taurus is located and the full moon at 25 degrees of Scorpio, wherever that is in your chart. The promise was transformation, but the process was allowing yourself to feel it, to heal it, to allow the baggage to come up. So this was an amazing grand release opportunity. Full moons are always times for release in the cycle. Scorpio, however, takes it very literally, takes it to a deep dive level, especially with the moon being hidden for that long. It gave us time to really dive deep, to clear the clutter in the basement, 
so that we're not sliding on sewage through our lives so that we can move it on out because Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto and Pluto rules toxicity and pollution. And, you know, I'm affirming that we're going to see some major movements to clean the water, to take uh, care of some of these, these uh, things that have created an imbalance in our connection with the earth over the next six months and ongoing because as we come to autumn, the eclipses will flip, so to speak. We'll have a solar eclipse in Scorpio and a lunar eclipse in Taurus. So the Scorpio lunar eclipse is clearing the decks for that new beginning in that area of your life. That's another way to look at it. It's also a culmination point for the last six months. The new moon occurred in October. So you look back to what were the intentions that you seeded then and what's been sabotaging them. This was a big opportunity to really go, aha, and release that. This eclipse promised, the promise of this eclipse was no less than transformation and a grand up-leveling of humanity. This is the possibility, the potential. And the Taurus solar eclipse said, it's your choice. You are a choice. You're on a planet of free will. You can continue to believe the narrative that has been handed to you, that you grew up with, that sometimes was to keep you safe. It was thought to provide security or whatever. We also know that it had to do with the grand games that some energies are playing. And many of us are saying, we don't want to play that game anymore. Thank you. We'll create our own narrative. And that's what Mercury retrograde, retrograde since Tuesday, is giving us the opportunity to review. Many revelations will pop with this eclipse, this lunar eclipse, and that will be an ongoing process. This lunar eclipse in the watery, emotionally intense sign, it created a very emotionally complex weekend as the moon was in Scorpio the whole weekend. And so as we move through the weekend, we might have felt the energy take us on this deep dive prior to the actual eclipse. Oftentimes when an eclipse pops light back in, the emotional lack that we're feeling in that area of our life that's sabotaging us is revealed, is popped, so that we can deal with it. I was shown a um, vision. I lead a mastermind on Thursdays, a mastermind with the moon. And, I, and if any of you are ever interested in that, let me know, because I'm going to be forming another one very, uh, very shortly at the summer solstice. So at that time, I was thinking about the Uranus effect with the solar eclipse and how that's ongoing. And my guides showed me myself with two reams of paper at about waist level in front of me, one on the right and one on the left. So a ream of paper is about 500 sheets of paper. And they broke open. And as feelings and old patterns came up for me to view and become aware of, the sheets of paper started to unfold. And I took the palms of my hands and took them like this. And I was just moving them, moving them, moving them. And what I was being shown was you do not have to wallow in the pain of past experiences or your awareness of things heretofore unseen by you or un, un, you know, where you, where you weren't really aware of what at a deep level, what was going on. But the second that you see it and you feel it and you get the awareness, you get the divine message, boom, 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 boom. You can move through them. That's one of the positive sides of Uranus it can move things suddenly, unexpectedly, quickly. So know that that is there for you. And you know, we've got Jupiter in Aries now, that hero energy, encouraging you to move into your heart, to be the hero of your own life, to move the things that prevent you from expressing your individual brilliance for the good of all, not just for yourself, but for the good of all. I've got a little something on these glasses here. So let me see if there's anything else that I have immediately before we move into the moon this week and what's going on with the moon. Um, I want to mention that the, the Taurus eclipse, 
the, the solar eclipse, I'm, I'm sorry, the lunar eclipse was square Saturn. So squares make us take action. They make us solve something, commit to something in the case of Saturn. And Taurus is master builder energy. Along with Saturn, it's asking you, what do you want to build now? I tell you, last night I had a whole sheet of stuff I was releasing. It was so powerful to release that as the moon began to reveal its light again. So I hope you took advantage of that. And I hope you made a wonderful wish. Because as I've mentioned before, solar eclipses make an impact for six months until the next set of eclipses comes along. And, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? And then... Um, the it, So the solar eclipse makes an imprint. You work with it for six months. You see the effects very keenly, especially on the world stage and in your own life. And then you have a 19-year imprint with the solar eclipse. This is how you can look at the larger cycles in your life and really view these eclipses, these, these events for the portals to higher consciousness that they truly are, especially now. This was a, a major, this, these eclipses this year are really helping us move past that midpoint to ascend into that new world consciousness and to align with our vision and consciousness, move the stuff out of the way. Lunar eclipse, Pops, as I mentioned, where there might be an emotional lack in our lives, the old programs and patterns that of our self-undoing that sabotage us so that we can move those out now and over the next six months. And as you do that, it imprints for 18 years. And that ties into the nodal axis. And I'm going to talk about the nodal axis. Actually, I'm going to go to that right now because that's what really puts the stamp on the tone of an eclipse. And this swath of energy, this characteristic of light that bathes the earth at the time of eclipses actually has a, determines soul purpose, what you came to give or teach and what you came to learn. So it's really, really important. Karen McCoy and Jan Spiller did this work together some years ago. And there's a book called Spiritual Astrology. If you want to look up your pre-birth eclipses, it's pretty profound. It doesn't point to a specific career or profession, but it gives you the, the complexity, the characteristic of energy of what you came to teach so that you can you know, channel it and align with it through your unique brilliance. So the nodes are not planets. They're points on the ecliptic. And the solar eclipse was a north node eclipse. It was united with the north node in Taurus. And that's where the north node is traveling. They are destiny points that, are, that point us toward the collective soul mandate for the next, for the time, for the 18 months that the, these nodes are in these signs. It's 18 to 19 months, and then they will shift into the next pair. They move back, so to speak, through the zodiac. So next year, we will move from Taurus and Scorpio into Aries and Libra. It's just an amazing, amazing divine design. So with the North Node Eclipse, it says, this is what you are being asked to move forward toward. Taurus, values, the earth knowing you're enough, everyone having enough, being enough, sensuality, honoring the physical senses, taking care of your body. And the south node in Scorpio is what we are moving, being asked to move away from. Therefore, you might have felt over the past two weeks, you might have had so much memory stuff coming up. The moon rules memory and habits and patterns. And so you might have had a lot of memories of the past coming up so that you could either embrace them or see where 
some of those experiences need to be, you know, you needed to feel it, to heal it and get the awareness. Aha. Uh -huh, and move on with gratitude, blessing the experiences of your life that have brought you to the magnificent being that you are now. So I want to mention some overarching things that have to do with the nodal axis, things that you're being asked to cultivate and things you're being asked to leave behind. So let me just find, find that. Oh, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I always have so many notes for you folks. So let me see what I did with that. It's right here. As I said, I had a plumbing crisis this morning, so it waylaid me a little bit. But these are some attributes with the North Node in Taurus. And you may have the North Node in Taurus. You may be experiencing a nodal return. It's really good to know that. And it's good to know the ground that they're covering because the nodal axis moves, as I mentioned, seemingly backwards through the chart. So it's what am I reevaluating, particularly with Taurus? Where have I invested my energy and I need to eliminate some of those investments of energy so I can reclaim and reinvest and reinvent my life in this new world that's coming into being. So there are some attributes for you to develop when the North Node is in Taurus. And I thank Jan Spiller for this. She's passed on, but a wonderful astrologer. And she wrote a book called Astrology for the Soul. And Astrology for the Soul gives to me one of the most um, comprehensive explanations and interpretations of the nodal axes of all of them. So if you know where your nodes are and they look like a hook and eye, okay? So the North node is like this and the South node is like a hook and eye upside down. It holds the past, right? And the North node is like a gateway to the future as you move forward. So the attributes for you to develop that can, you know, these can open up a lot of gifts and talents, which this Taurus Scorpio, extremely fertile creative energy in an extremely fertile creative time of year, spring, May. Loyalty, awareness of boundaries, taking things one step at a time, an awareness of your personal values, patience, one step at a time, right? Honoring expressed needs of yourself and others. Enjoying the five physical senses. Gratitude. An awareness of nurturing from Mother Earth. Forgiveness. Persistence. So, you know, you might have kind of gone, oh, bingo. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been dealing with. So those are some of the attributes that you want to develop. And the tendencies you want to leave behind, which will help make your life and your journey um, easier and more enjoyable, are an attraction to crisis situations is what you're letting go of. What collectively, the, the shadow stuff that we're all letting go of, attraction to crisis situations, over-concern with other people's business. Boy, does this play into the media? Yeah. Impatience, inappropriate intensity, judgmental tendencies. Preoccupation with the psychological motivations of others. Resistance to cooperating with what others want. Overreacting. Destroying something in order to eliminate just one part. And obsessive compulsive tendencies. So those are the things that particularly at the time of this lunar eclipse you're being asked to leave behind. But also over the next six months and then continuing until the nodal axis shifts. So the Achilles heel of the Taurus North Node energy is needing validation from others, not just knowing you're enough right where you are, as you are. It can create an unending search for a soulmate as opposed to becoming in really wonderful, appreciative relationship with yourself, which then automatically attracts that frequency in that which you seek. Yeah, okay. So let's move to what's happening with the moon this week. So as I mentioned, it was an emotionally complex weekend, but now the moon is in Sagittarius. It moved it at 4.50 a.m. this morning into from water to fire. And fire represents spirit. 
So it's a, a, a very spirited and spiritual moon. And you might find that beliefs that underlie the, the, the things that the, the full moon popped are coming up. And you get an opportunity to look at what the new truth or the true truth would be and how those beliefs no longer support what you're building, what you're moving into. So, uh, you know, it's about releasing emotional blockages as well as physical blockages. By the way, Scorpio rules the eliminative organs, the colon, the reproductive organs, the root chakra. So all of these things, you know, if you're stuffed up in your body, that's a big clue that there are things that you need to release physically and then emotionally. Sometimes it works the other way. Sometimes it's that physical stimulation. Ah, Catherine, mine too. Yes, my moon's in Taurus as well. So as we move through this, hydrocolonics, I mean, you know, fasting, cleansing, purifying, that's what this full moon calls for. And you can really tell directly by the way your bodily, body's handling its eliminative functions and how you're able to allow your creativity to flow. If there are literal physical blockages that could be released that would begin, the, you know, getting you, up-leveling you emotionally in your emotional body. So you could harness the emotions, turn them into feelings with feelization and manifest what you truly desire. Big word for Scorpio, desire. So, um, you know, we're in the full moon phase. We continue in the full moon phase, actually, until Thursday. Yeah. So I hope you made your wish last night. But if you didn't, there's still time. Make a wish. Do your release work and make a wish. Because like I said, 18-year imprint with a lunar eclipse, right? Yeah, big stuff. And then you're going to turn that wish into an intention. You're going to incorporate it into your intention at the time of the Gemini new moon coming up in a couple of weeks. So joy, celebration, lighter energy. I mentioned that. And at 6.33 a.m. this morning, and every time that I talk about it is Pacific Daylight Time. So adjust it for whatever time zone you might be in. So at 6.33 a.m., there was uh, some Jupiter harmonizing, which is beautiful with the, the Sagittarius moon ruled by Jupiter. And, you know, ask yourself what new adventure is being revealed for you. Sagittarius is the sign of adventure and Jupiter expands, expands your, the horizons of your mind and your world. So it's a day to, to uh, you know, contemplate adventures, see what new adventures are revealed. Tomorrow, the healing power of love and self-confidence comes into play. The moon continues in Sagittarius. And we feel we can work together tomorrow. That's a good feeling to build a new, more compassionate society. So, uh, you know, what's your discussions? They can be really up-leveled connections with people especially with mercury retrograde you know getting in touch with with friends with with our with our peeps with our group with our aligned community so to speak and sharing ideas and then at night the desire for harmony and peace can inspire you <clears throat> regarding your humanity those humanitarian causes or it can encourage floating away on a, a cloud of of uh, you know of dreams uh, rather than engaging in any confrontations, because when we're talking about our humanitarian ideas, sometimes people get strongly opinionated, and that can definitely happen in Sagittarius. Moon in Sagittarius can engender self-righteousness. That's the downside. Judgment. These are just belief systems of separation. So watch, you know, you might watch for those on Tuesday, but it's basically a good day as it emphasizes the healing power of love and self-acceptance. And then Wednesday, the lunar mood shifts as the moon moves into Capricorn. So it moves from fire to earth and we get down to business. Wednesday, we, you know, we, we get down to business. We come out, you know, the, the Sagittarius energy um, can be very work oriented. But because of the Mercury retrograde in Gemini, you might find that your energy feels a little scattered or you have a challenge focusing. Remember last week during that void, of course, moon that began the week, I said, Get your priorities straight. Look at what you want to focus on. Focus and flow. And so uh, I hope that you did that. And if not, revisit your intentions. Get your focus on board. It will be much easier to do on Wednesday when the moon moves into Capricorn at 5.01 a.m. And on that day, others may seek your support. 
you know, and that's being the compassionate, uh, you know, activating a compassionate leader in yourself. You're cosmically encouraged on Thursday to make significant and long lasting contributions. The moon moves into the disseminating phase at 2.41 a.m. So when you wake up on Thursday morning, you'll be in the disseminating phase. And that's the harvest phase of this cycle. And it is the phase where we taste the fruit. You know, we take a bite out of the, out of the fruit regarding the insights and our full moon experience. Is it bitter? Is it sweet? What are we going to do about that? It all begins in consciousness, right? So we add our unique spin to the changes that we're implementing. So that's kind of exciting, right? And innovative ideas are available during the evening. And you might feel, and you'll feel you want to share them. So this is kind of restless energy. Um, as the day moves on, but it abates around bedtime. So it's just, you know, a little bit of jiggity energy. If you're someone who has a lot of mutable energy, Virgo, Gemini, Pisces, you might feel that more than others. That's one of the things that this Mercury retrograde does. I feel the nervous system of the whole, the whole collective, the whole planet has been taken to a whole new level. So that's why, again, breathing, you know, breathing, getting out in nature, so, so important. And on Friday, uh, the Capricorn moon, as we wake up, it unites with Pluto as we complete our journey through the uh, territory of the Capricorn, of the moon in Capricorn. And so uh, you might awake, you might just awaken with a sense of something that needs to be done. You know, Capricorn is that sign that takes care of business. And when it's conjunct Pluto, that, that you know, harnesses our power to, to uh, look at what, what regarding our plan and our goals needs to be done. And then we have the, uh, the, the Taurus sun, which is at the last degrees now as we move through this week. And uh, the Capricorn moon, they're both at the last degrees. So you might feel some pressure to finish some projects quickly might become a little more challenging as the energy shifts at 5.53 a.m. on Friday. We move, the sun moves into the sign of Gemini. We shift from earth to air. So we're still in the Taurus lunar cycle. Again, tying up loose ends, harvesting our insights, looking at what we've done last six months and the last two weeks on those, those really important, powerful new moon eclipse intentions. And the early morning on Friday is going to be good for sharing your perspectives as the work week wraps up. You know, awareness, living deliberately, living with awareness, breathing and taking the time to go below the surface and taking the time to connect and share. So it, it, Friday's going to be optimistic. The, the moon is in harmony with Jupiter, with happy, jovial uh, lucky Jupiter, and that's going to contribute to that optimistic outlook. Uncertainty may build as the day moves on with the sun moving into Gemini at 6.22 p.m. So I think I misspoke. At 5.53 a.m., the moon moves into Aquarius. The moon moves into Aquarius. So that's an air sign. And then the sun moves into Gemini at 6.22 p.m. on Friday. And that's also an air sign. So the energy shifts from the earthiness, the, the, the do it, the, you know, the taking care of business aspect um, of Capricorn into an air sign. And so we move from the, the physical, pragmatic activity into a more mental energy, a lot more mental energy. So that's why you want to, you know, you want to use this week, especially when the moon was in the Capricorn, to take care of business, to get stuff done. And make those changes. So uh, this air is going to bring new ideas and their implementation right up front for you. And if you remember during the Aries cycle, that was about bold and dairy ideas. So you might go back and check with the ones that you had decided to bring forward. Solidify, ground yourself. Yeah. So on Saturday, the moon squares Uranus, the master of the unexpected. And that happens in the morning. So that means you might have to modify your agenda on Saturday morning. 
And, you know, the sun in Gemini just, it reminds you to be flexible. It's a mutable sign. Change, mutability, flexibility is an asset. And also, of course, remembering to ground yourself, to breathe, to feel your feet so that uh, the restlessness of that energy doesn't take you off course. And midday on Saturday, you'll be able to incorporate new information with ease. So that night, uh, Venus and the moon together in a good aspect could add excitement to a new creative project or new creative flow or a romantic endeavor. So happy weekend, right? Yeah. And then Sunday, we enter the last quarter phase at 11.42 a.m. And <clears throat> also at 8.49 a.m., the moon enters watery Pisces. So we move from air to water, moon-wise. And it may hamper your ability to concentrate. But it's really good to go back and get in touch with what the big dream is. The big dream that you're put, taking step by step to build a good foundation under. So that you have uh, something solid over the long term. And in the Taurus cycle with Taurus and Scorpio, that has to do definitely with, the, with your resources, with finances and and just the values the things you need to be who you are what are those let that inform your values and then um at 6 14 p.m sunday evening hmm, mercury mercury retrograde moves back out of gemini into taurus so wrap up those practical matters as they could uh, trip you up later if they're not completed. So remember that I that I said that on Sunday night, you know. So, uh, you know, the weekend may be, uh, therefore, a, a mix of work and play, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the energies, uh, the energies of this, this month, this lunar cycle with, uh, with uh, it, it's been all about, power for a long time and this Aries Jupiter moving into Aries has a lot to do with self-confidence and self-empowerment and then this eclipse in Scorpio being ruled Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto it's co-ruled so that really asks us to look at what sabotages our ability to feel self-empowered to be self-empowered and with Mars Mars is energy wherever Mars goes energy flows and it continues in Pisces, so it continues to energize inspiration, spirituality, divine connection, compassion on the high side. On the other side, it can add to the scatteredness. It can make us dreamy. It's very nonlinear energy. It's very emotionally sensitive energy. And Mars is going to continue until next week on the 25th. Mars will move into Aries. It will be at home and it will quickly come to meet Jupiter. So what are you growing in your life? What do you want to grow? Where are the weeds? You could look at the, the blockages and the things that are coming up, uh, being popped in the wake of the uh, Scorpio eclipse. You could look at those as weeds in the garden of, of, uh, you know, of manifestation, of creation of a new earth that you're helping create. So it's a good time of the year for weeding anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. And this, uh, this is this Taurus energy both north node wise and sun wise and lunar cycle wise again is master builder energy so a master builder has a blueprint gets the materials together gets a budget together deals with the practical things that are needed and makes each step toward the goals of the long term plan solid before jumping to another Transformation, as I mentioned, was the promise of this eclipse and of this energy, not just change. And that's what we're looking for, right, in our culture. We're looking not just for cha changes, but the transformation of the way we live, the way we treat each other, kindness, compassion. Now, it's really important that we carry those forward, that Mars and Jupiter, uh, that Jupiter and Neptune combination in Pisces that we had that conjoined, they conjoined on April 12th. 
And that sent a tone out saying, remember, remember who you are. Spirit having a human experience, ascending to, to that, to clear and activate and elevate that fifth strand of DNA and ascend into the fifth dimension, right where you are, right here, with frequency, rhythm, and vibration. This uh, also, this eclipse energy was very shamanic energy. You know, one of the things that shamans do is they go into the underworld, so to speak, and they retrieve uh, spirits oftentimes so that one can find, find peace, so one then can proceed with a level playing field. This is very much what this eclipse was about, moving into the underworld, the shadow, of our collective consciousness. So you're going to see a lot of distracting stuff. If it's, al if it's aligned with your narrative, your highest good, greatest joy, and harming none, if it's aligned with that, then it might be something that you want to listen to for inspiration and upliftment and wisdom. But if it's not, just be aware. You know, you can feel it. Feel Feel what is aligned with your frequency. Feel when you feel high. Joy. Joy is the clearest evidence of the presence of spirit. So when you are enjoying, when you are in joy in life, that, that is a really good uh, significator. When you are feeling your heart chakra open, and remember the heart is a swinging door. It swings in toward you, filling you with self-love. And then... As, it's, as the heart opens out, it's that overflow, that pouring out that others benefit from. That's the way it works. It can't work the other way. I feel that's one of the huge shifts that's occurring with the divine feminine. And that is that we are realizing that we have, that our well of self-love, self-appreciation, knowing we are enough, knowing that because we live from our hearts, and we are that light-filled consciousness that we are beautiful. We are beautiful by unique divine design, not by, uh, you know, cultural categorization, so to speak. So feeling the beauty of you, enjoying the beauty of you, that's very much Taurus energy. And the shamanic energy also, you know, diving down into uh, the realm of the spirit and retrieving, you know, soul retrieval, spirit retrieval, retrieving that energy that's been locked up in those old patterns and habits so that you can ultimately have the eagle's vision and view. And that's a really good place to just operate from, period. The eagle's view, the eagle's perch. How can you stay on your eagle's perch? Um, I found with this eclipse watching that my words, the words that came forth for the for the aftermath of wonder and awe and gratitude. So cultivate your inner child. I, I think a lot of the things that come up under at, the at a time like this with the Scorpio energy and the Pluto in this Capricorn sign that can be all about achievement, that it's really important to be sure that your inner child is integrated, paid attention to, brought in every day because of that sense of wonder that a child has, that your inner child has, that's such an anemic part of your creative process, of the creativity that you are. You know, I um, on Tuesdays, I go down to the valley, as I call it. I'm in the high desert, so I drive down to, uh, to the Palm Springs area, and I go to a movie. It's my flex day, as I call it. And last week, I went to see uh, Doctor Strange, the new Avengers uh, multiverse. And, you know, I thought, well, hmm, why am I doing this? Is this just going to be a bunch of violence and fluff? But it really got my brain going. And it just really made me think about the multidimensionality of all of us. You know, how we truly are playing roles in our lives. And it was interesting because as they moved from universe to universe, they existed, looking different, having different values. You know, there was one point at which they, they uh, were at a stoplight, and in this universe, green was stop and red was go, which was interesting. That's just one little thing. 
But one of the points also was how whatever occurs in one dimension affects all the dimensions, affected all the universes that these people existed in. I also thought it was interesting as they moved from universe to universe, they needed no luggage. You know, they just moved and, and were provided for, although I never did see them sit down and eat a meal. So that's interesting, right? But there are messages to be, to be gleaned and a remembering, a remembering to do during this retrograde that we live in many dimensions. And this is what we're being tuned into, that we navigate between dimensions in our consciousness, in our thoughts, continually you know you have something that makes you feel good you have something that throws you off you're in the past you're in the future oh you're in the present and that's the point of power the present is the only point of power if you use the present to elevate and ground a future vision that's aligned with the highest of your values and the highest good and greatest joy then you know, that's, that's something that you can, you can carry forward from the present out. That's when the future can be useful. After all, the Aquarian age is about the future. The Aquarian is the futurist. But it also demands that that Aquarian energy be walked now. And that's what Taurus is telling us. How do you walk it now? Is your heart open to yourself and others? This has been a cycle that is ruled by Venus, telling you, lunar eclipse, Mars, Pluto, square Saturn, all of this. But ultimately, love is always the answer because it's what and who we are. Also, there was a lovely uh, trine going on with Mars and Neptune at the time of, uh, you know, with, with Neptune in particular, at the time of this uh, eclipse. So that was a reminder to bring that big dream forward because that's what you're clearing away. Clearing, cleansing, purifying. Awakening to what's being revealed so that you can clear the decks and that ship that is guiding you into the world that you envision so that that ship can move forward with a clear path. You know, the seas may be bumpy. They're going to continue to be bumpy because we're, we're all being asked to do the work of, a, of allowing, allowing those old beliefs to move out, to not be so constricted around our way, but to know that we truly are building our way. We're the path. We're the light. And so that's what I always want you to remember, as you know, that you're the light, that you're this magnificent drop of, of, of clarity and hope in the ocean of humanity. And this eclipse is just an incredible opportunity to clear away whatever keeps that drop from being clear and free of toxicity. Pluto rules toxins, by the way. So I, I tell you, as I leave you, just love, 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 love yourself. It's the strongest stimulant for the immune system. It's the way to avoid any threat that might come along. Tomorrow, there's going to be, um, on, the, on a Unify, there will be something, uh, a self-love fest. Wednesday, Wednesday of this week, from 6 to 8, there will be a love fest. And there will be four wonderful people contributing insights and wisdom, and I'll be one of them. So that's Pacific Daylight Time. Watch for that on my Facebook page. If you'd like to book a session, be sure to go to the link and put yourself on my calendar so you can really use these eclipse energies. Like I said, big stuff, 18 to 19 years. You know, you want to know what you're working on right now, how to use this energy, along with all the other incredible energies of change and awakening that have happened in 2022. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about the moon powered portals of awakening in 2022 on Wednesday on uh, Unify on uh, women, women rising. So I'm really excited about that. My YouTube channel is Claudia Thompson, moon powered astrologer. So it's new. 
please go and subscribe if you want to make comments if you want to make a comment or if you would like a free chat with me message me at moon powered astrology on facebook i love hearing from you and even more my clients are very precious to me so and all of you are thank you for listening today i wish you a wonderful post eclipse week I feel that it was a really amazing event. And remember, you can move through things really quickly, be the hero in your life, feel it to heal it, and remember that you are the hope of the world. Be the change you want to see. Now, as always, I love you to the moon and way beyond.